Hey guys, so today I'm going to just film me getting ready. I'm just going to go shopping. Nothing too special. Um, don't mind my clothes, just in a baggy t-shirt. Just got done getting my workout on. Um, so I already... Actually, no, I haven't. I'm going to moisturize my face. Now that that is done, kind of just let that soak in for just a little bit, just so it really gets into my skin. I'm going to, I usually use my Magic Lumi primer, but today I'm going to use my Professional by Benefit. And I just focus that in my T-zone and then work it to the outsides of my face. I don't really put it all over. And then I'm just going to take my two foundations that I mixed together, the Revlon Color Stay and then the True Match Lumi. And this one's in neutral and this one's in neutral beige. One's kind of warm and one's kind of cool. I do have neutral undertones, so I never buy one foundation. I'm constantly mixing. mixing two together and in the summer I use more of the Lumi just because it is darker than the neutral beige one and it kind of is I just dot this all over my face and there's a spider crawling on my window that is not cool but we'll let him go then I just take my e.l.f. large powder brush, tap it in first, and then blend out. Just because I feel like it gives a better coverage when I do that. And then I just take whatever's left on my hand and just pick it up on the brush and just kind of add it to wherever I feel needs more coverage or didn't get covered and then I always make sure to get my ears because I cannot have any lines and blend down my neck. I'm gonna take my Age Rewind from Maybelline and I took the sponge off mine just because I feel like the sponge wastes a lot of the product and then I kind of go in a triangle formation and then just blend out. And then whatever's left on like my fingers I take on my chin, down my nose, on my forehead. Because I feel my face looks really cool anyone's face. It looks really uneven if you only highlight so much under your under eye and don't balance it out anywhere. Okay. And I kind of bring it around my nose too just because I'm kind of red there. So now that we have that done I'm going to set my under eye with my e.l.f. high definition under eye setting powder and I do like this stuff it does brighten up my under eye but I have an itch. Be careful when using loose HD because that's what gives the white undercast under your eye when using flash pictures or when using flash in pictures. So when that's done, I set the rest of my face. Just take the Rimmel Stay Matte, mine's in Sandstorm, and I just take it on a kabuki brush and just kind of push it in, same as my foundation, and then blend it all. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go in and bronze with my e.l.f. bronzing powder. And I just take it on a little 
brush like this. It's from like Mary Kay or something. I don't know. I just found it. And then I just do bigger circles on the outsides of my face. So you can see the difference, how much more shadow that adds. And then I just take a little bit and come up to my forehead. Or forehead. I don't have more than one. And then down my neck and my jaw. So kind of anywhere the sun would naturally hit you and the natural shadows of your face. And when I contour, I kind of stay close to my hairline here and then above the arch of your eyebrow is where you want to go into your temple. You don't want to bring it too far in because then it will make your face look way too narrow and kind of alien-like. Make sure you are getting into that hairline a little bit so you don't have that disconnect of your scalp being a different color than your face. And the one thing people always forget to do is the neck. You always want to make sure you get the neck because... Is that a move? Mm -hmm. Because... And then I take a Real Techniques contour brush and my Hula bronzer. This sample has lasted me forever. And I do my nose. And then I just add more depth into the hollows of my cheek. And this I just move back and forth ever so slightly. Just right in there. To really carve out my cheeks. And then whatever's extra I just bring again onto my forehead. And pick up a little more and just do my jawline. And under my lip. Okay, now that that's done, I move on to blush. And I do more of a cool tone. I mix blushes. I never, I seldom wear just one blush. But like I said before in my last video, you want to keep it like this. You don't want to angle your brush, your blush, because that looks too unnatural. Ugh, there's a hair. You kind of just want to move it back and forth. You want to connect it to the middle part of your ear so it's blending in with that bronzer that we just put. And I like to use a stippling brush just because then it doesn't pack on so much color all at once and then you'll have a hard time blending it out. I like to bring it on my chin and my forehead just so, like, I feel like my face has color all over and it's not just color, like, right here. And you can't even tell, like, I put anything there. It just kind of, I don't know, serves a purpose for me, I guess. <laughs> not really anyone else. Okay, and then I take NYX's Terracotta, and it's just kind of a bronzier blush, and I just kind of run that over 
just so this isn't so cool. And this color I used before was peach. It's not even really like a peach color. Like that's more pink to me. That's definitely pink to me. But it's called peach, so whatever, Nyx. We'll just go with it. And then I highlight and I use my Mary Kay. Couldn't even tell you what color it is. There's only two. There's this one and then one that's more of like a bronzy highlight. So, and I've had this thing forever. And I just take that on the high points on my face. Down the center of my nose. And keep it bow. Alright, so now that the face is done, I like to, whoa, caps flying everywhere. I like to go through with my Urban Decay setting powder. This is the um, long lasting one. I just like to spray that. I'm out of frame and I don't know why. Sorry if I'm out of frame guys, I my setup isn't the best right now. Okay, so now that I've done that, I like to move on to my eyebrows. And I just take this random e.l.f. kit that I bought for like $3 at Target. I've had it forever. But I take this shade right here, as you can see, almost gone. And the tornado sirens are going off, I'm pretty sure. First Wednesday of the month, that's why. Haha. <laughs> Scared me for a second. Because it is stormy today, and me and storms, we don't really get along that well. And I just use powder to fill in my eyebrows. I already do have strong eyebrows, and my hair is pretty blonde, so it would, I don't know. I just keep it simple. Nothing too fancy here. And this one has more of an arch than this one, so I kind of fake this one as best I can. I really focus that on the outer. What is this? And then I blend them out. Make sure one isn't darker than the other because that's definitely not cute either. Sometimes I wish I could pull off bleaching my eyebrows and having them be like pink or something fun. Just because I think it's cool that people that can pull that off it's a dream of mine, but we can live without it. Okay, so now that my eyebrows are done, I rarely set my eyebrows with a clear gel. I have one. I'll do it today, but usually on a daily basis, I don't. I always forget. And I just used a clear mascara. I don't have anything special because for me, I don't. I find it kind of pointless to go out and spend a good amount of money on eyebrow products when I don't really need it. Like, I would understand if I had like no eyebrows and filled them in a lot. But since I don't, I don't really care to, so. Then I take my eyeshadow primer, and I use the Stay Don't Stray from Benefit. And I don't even really need this. Half the days I when I do do my makeup, I don't use it because I already did put the concealer on it. So if you have just a concealer and you don't want to go out and 
spend the money on an eyeshadow primer than just use a concealer. But make sure you want to set the concealer before you go into eye makeup. Like just set it with your foundation because you don't want it to crease. Excuse me. And even with an eyeshadow primer, if you do have oily, oilier eyelids, you can always take either just like a shade that's like skin tone or just your setting powder or translucent powder and set it so that it doesn't crease and then your eyeshadow that acts as like an aid to help blending in your eyeshadow. So there's a plus to it all, people. There's a method to our madness, as we would say. All right, what do I want to do today? Going shopping. Well, no matter what I look I do, I always take Naked 2 and my E40 from Sigma and always put that in the upper crease. Always. Ask me why, I don't know. I just feel like it adds more shape to my eye, I guess. I'm sorry I keep looking in so many different directions. My mirror's here, my viewfinder's there, and my computer that I can see myself filming on is down below me. Just want to make sure I'm in focus and everyone can see me and you know the deal. Okay, and then for my highlight, I guess I'll take the two I always take, Walk of Shame and Virgin, or Venus, not Virgin, that's in the other palette. And just pop that. Not my brow bone. And I mix the two together because one is matte and then the other one is like a teeny, teeny, tiny shimmer. You can't even probably see it on camera, but it just adds like, it's like a satin finish. So it just adds like a little something, but I love this Walk of Shame color for a brow bone highlight. It's like perfect, okay? Okay, so now that I've done that, Make sure you're constantly blending each step. Blending is the key to every eye makeup application. If it's not blended, it's not going to work. Okay. Still don't know what I'm going to do for my eyeshadow, but we'll take this Lorac Mochaccino eyeshadow and just a small tapered blending brush. And just start working that somewhere in the crease, I guess. perfect there this color is perfect you could also use it for eyebrows because it is more of an ashy tone and it's matte but it is a good crease color I I think I use this almost every day in my crease but okay so now that we have that on and blended, I still don't know what I want to do. I'm going to take this Lorac Chocolate Bar Palette and this color, I don't know, kind of looks really white, but it's not really, it's like a goldish color. And we'll pop that. Kind of blending it on the inner half. Try and scoop. So you can see what I'm doing.
Stick with this. I'll take these two bronzy shades. And we'll take her on uh, just a flat sheer brush. Take a mixture of those two. Take this color right here, it's kind of like a coppery color, and just kind of place that in the middle. And then we'll take this smaller blending brush and this matte color. Like, and just tap off the extra. Then I'll take the other side and it's like a little pencil brush. And then I go back in with my E40 and just blend it all out. And I think today we're going to do liner and lashes because I'm just feeling fabulous. So now I'm going to go in and curl my eyelashes. And if anyone knows a trick to curling your eyelashes but not taking off your eyeliner, I'll let a girl know because I spend so much time doing my eyeliner. And then see, it just gets taken off right away. Go back through and fix it later. I always just put my glue on the back of something. You can see it right there. Um, and then I just let it sit there for a while. And then I'll move on to the rest of my face. And now I'll do the bottom eyelashes. So this is the NYX Retractable Lip Liner in Nude, so it's like that, and it is waterproof. I just kind of fill in the outer corners, not too precisely, nothing special. Uh. And that's too pale for me. As you can see, I am not a fan of that. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to create like an ombre effect with this. And we'll do gloss today. I just used the NYX Butter Gloss in Eclair. Then I'm just using, forgot what these are, but I'm pretty sure they're red cherries. I can do that. They're just really simple. I just take the back of any like little small brush. And all you need is just like a thin coat. Let that dry for just a little bit. I'm 
and you can just tell the difference. Just... It's amazing. Okay, so now we'll take the other one. The blue. I hate the smell of blue. It smells horrible. Okay. And it makes it easier for me to put on fake eyelashes if I'm looking down into a mirror because then you can just like place it on top and you're not fighting through your lashes when you put it on straight ahead. I used to hate fake lashes but now I'm obsessed because they add so much to just one look, even a simple look like adding fake eyelashes can just like jazz it up that much more. Just like that. So this is the finished look. Can't get much better.